Okay, we're going to talk about lip, lactate inflection point. What is lip? For VCE PE34 purposes, you need to know what it is, you need to define it, be able to identify it on a graph, so show the relationship between um, either time and lactate levels, you need to understand what causes lip, which is when accumulation exceeds removal and what impact does that happen on the athlete? What is the performance, uh, how is the performance impacted? What is the difference between trained and untrained and lip? So when we aerobically train, how does that have an effect on lip? And, um, and what type of training is best to improve lip? So what is lip? Lip can be defined as the point beyond which accumulation of lactic acid exceeds the removal. Here's a little diagram. Inside our muscles, when we produce ATP, lactate is produced. It's produced, but it's removed. And when we're exercising at submaximal intensities, our, ex our removal meets the accumulate uh, the uh, production of lactate. However, when this lactate production is faster than we can get rid of it, or can, you can say that the other way, when our removal is not as fast as it being produced, that is when we've reached our lactate inflection point. So what does this mean? If we have an accumulation of lactate, that also coincides with the accumulation of hydrogen ions. And what that does is make, is make our muscles very acidic and that interferes with muscle contraction. Not good, not good. So the intensity at which this occurs, where the, the accumulation exceeds how quickly we can remove it occurs at about 85 to 87 percent of heart rate max so you, you're on the verge of uh, I can't keep going for much longer before I fatigue now in the past we used to use vo2 as a better predictor of uh, vo2 max as a predictor of performance the higher the VO2 max, the better the performance. Now, particularly with endurance events, mainly with endurance events, both of these are related to endurance events because this is how much oxygen, a maximal amount of oxygen that we can take in, transport and utilise. Uh, that's one way of predicting performance. Another way is if we know where their lip occurs, the point at which their accumulation exceeds the removal, that also gives us an indication of, of how, how quickly or how intense they can perform before they get to the point where fatigue is going to begin to set in. As you can see from the diagram, the diagram shows our lactate levels. This is lactate and this is time. Or oh, sorry, in the graph's case, it's um, speed. So how fast the person is running. So when our production of lactate <coughs> equals the removal, the, re the removal of it, that's my little shovel, when the production equals the removal, our lactate stays about the same. Generally, this occurs at some maximal level, steady state. Everyone's happy, oxygen supply equals demand. But when intensity increases, so when our speed goes above 16 kilometers an hour, that's when the athletes accumulating all this lactic lactate can't remove it quick enough. So exponentially, the graph will increase. It's not a linear relationship. A linear relationship, for example, heart rate and intensity, a linear relationship goes like this. 
which means as heart rate increases, intensity increases. But with the lip, the graph, once you hit that point where the accumulation of lactate exceeds the removal, we get an exponential uh, graph. And, um, and that's, that's, that's when we know that the athlete uh, has reached their lip and they will very soon fatigue due to the accumulation of metabolic byproducts. Now, with training, what training does, when you aerobically train an athlete, you delay the point at which the accumulation exceeds removal. So for this athlete, they reach their lip at about 16 kilometres an hour. With training, as you can see on the graph, the athlete can now go to 18 kilometres an hour so they can perform at higher intensities before they reach that point where fatigue will set in. As soon as you go past that lactate inflection point, your body will be accumulating lactate quicker than you can remove it. What does that mean? You, you will fatigue, you will slow down because the muscle acidic, um, muscles become uh, acidic which interferes with muscular contractions. Here's another diagram of it. This graph is uh, showing again the difference between pre-aerobic training and post-aerobic training. So how do we improve our lactate inflection point? How do we exercise at higher intensities? So how do we get to go faster before, before fatigue sets in? We do that through aerobically training. We will learn more about that later on in the year. Uh, in the past, lactate, which is um, a byproduct of, uh, of energy production, was seen as being the bad guy. Uh, when the lactic acid accumulates, that means that uh, fatigue will set in. But lactate is actually not bad because when oxygen is present, lactate is um, resynthesized back into ATP. So lactate can be good. What happens with lactic acid when, with, without, when there's not insufficient oxygen, so when there's not enough oxygen, that lactic acid breaks into lactate and hydrogen ions. And it's the accumulation of hydrogen ions that, um, that fatigue you. So even at rest, we are producing lactic acid. And that's fine. But when we, when we have insufficient oxygen, we get lactate and we get hydrogen ions. When we have oxygen, we, we also break the lactic acid down into lactate, but um, that gets resynthesized into ATP. But when we don't have oxygen, we get the accumulation of hydrogen ions. And the problem with that, as stated before, it creates some um, muscle acidosis and impairs muscle function. So before we get on to the difference between lip and lactate tolerance, uh, what causes an athlete to reach their lip? It's not got anything to do with energy systems. What causes an athlete to get to that point where the lactate exponentially increases and causes fatigue? It's the removal rate is not matching the accumulation rate. So it's more about the ability of the body to remove lactate. That, that is what, that's what causes a lip. We can't remove it quick enough. Okay, so difference between lip and lactate tolerance. Many students get these concepts confused. Lip is aerobic. Lactate tolerance, make sure I spell tolerance correctly, is anaerobic. Anaerobic, two completely different concepts. We've just covered 
lactate inflection point that increases, which is good because you can go faster for longer before you fatigue, that we improve through aerobic training. So your long, slow types of training. Whereas lactate tolerance, that's our body's ability to, uh, to deal with excessive amounts of lactate. Now, this happens above our lactate inflection point, which is at an intensity above our lip. This is when we're working anaerobically. And by, by training anaerobically well above our, the 85% of our heart rate max, that means that our body is getting used to tolerating lactate. Basically, we can just keep going faster and harder for longer. If you remember back from PE12, our anaerobic glycolysis system, this is much faster. It's a faster energy system. It produces ATP at a faster rate. So by doing high-intensity training, anaerobic-type training, such as short interval training or plyometrics, what this does is it, um, it helps our body to tolerate lactate much better so that we can keep going and using that faster rate of ATP um, in order to in order to go faster. Now that's different to lip. This is aerobically trained. Lactate tolerance is where we're improving our buffering system. We're tolerating the lactate. An example I like to use is um, uh, is with um, that that you might see on movies. You might it's a it's a little bit stereotypical, but um, some some groups of people don't tolerate alcohol as much as others. People that are used to drinking alcohol, they can have lots of drinks and they don't appear to be drunk. Whereas people uh, who are not used to drinking, they take one drink and oh, and it's very obvious that the alcohol has, um, has affected them more. This is about tolerance. So um, lactate tolerance is similar and that if you get your body used to the accumulator of hydrogen ions, you are um, giving your body an increased buffering system just so that it can cope with those metabolic byproducts before fatigue sets in. So you can, you can be producing energy at a faster rate before you fatigue. Sorry, I should have to that slide more quickly okay so um, hopefully that has helped you understand the difference between lip which is aerobic training that's increasing the um, the point at which the accumulation exceeds removal and lactate tolerance is when you do lots of fast training so that you can just cope with the metabolic byproducts and you can you can keep working at those higher intensities for longer before you fatigue